Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Another glorious and wonderful day to meditate on the things of God, to meditate on the Word, to listen to the birds. I can't hear any birds from here, but but it just kind of sparked in my thinking about how the birds sing. You know, every morning the birds are out there singing. They're chirping, they're talking. You know, they're just chittering and talking away. But it's like every morning... Even the birds are just saying, God, you're so wonderful. God, you're so glorious. Just singing about his goodness. That's how I picture it. So that's a good lesson for us to wake up in the morning and sing about the goodness of God. Even if things uh, have seemed hard or even if things have, you know, you, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, as we say, just sing about the goodness of God. Sing anyway. Talk about how good he is because he is good. And situations will change, but God won't. God is good. Amen. Well, this is a, a little, not off topic, but a little different than meditating on the goodness of God. The, the scripture I was reading or thinking about this morning it was in Matthew chapter 24. And starting with verse 45. Where it says, this is more of a, a sobering thought, I guess. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master has made ruler over his household, to give them food at the appointed time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Now you think about this very literally, of course, at first. There's a master who left the house, and he appointed someone to do some work, to to give the food to the other servants and to the household at the right time. But the analogy, I guess, is Jesus. Jesus left and he's appointed. He, uh, what it says, he, when he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. He appointed apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. He gave gifts to the body. Well, he has servants, people serving in his body. He gave them things to give to others, gifts, skills, things that that some of them, you know, you can develop in gifts, develop and grow in the graces that you have. But these are things given. So he gave food to a servant, and they learn how to give that food to others. It's not the food that they grew themselves. It's not the their great inherent abilities. It is a gift from the Lord that they distribute to others. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his fat master made ruler... So there have I a high position in the body of Christ over his household to give them food at the appointed time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. What do I read there? I read, just be faithful in doing what the Lord leads you to do, what he tells you to do. Blessed are you. When he shows up, you know, we think when he comes, like, oh, and he splits the sky. He comes riding on the white horse or whatever. No, when he comes, when he shows up, when he shows up to say, hey, how are you doing with the things I have given you? When he comes, when he comes to check in on you, blessed are you if he finds you doing what he's called you to do. There is a, a time of reckoning, a time of like a grading time, you know, the teacher comes and then she's going to, I always think she, because like elementary school teachers very often are female, but she's going to grade your your report card or grade your, not give you a report card, grade your scores. Blessed are you when she comes, when he comes and grades you, right? But then it says, truly, truly, I say to you, he'll make him ruler over all his good. So if you're faithful, you become a ruler. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master delays his coming and begins to strike his fellow servants. And eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not look for him, and an hour in which he is not aware of, and will cut him in pieces. Ouch. That, well, it's bad. <laughs> and appoint him a portion with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When I think of that, though, now we're talking the analogy aspect of it. Not literally he's beating them with their hand, with whackety, whackety, whacky, although that could be an issue but beat his fellow servant. So he says, I have a position of authority. I know what to say. So I'm going to use a tool, my tongue, and beat the other servants. I'm going to whip them with my words. Speak ill, speak bad. You guys don't know what you're doing. I'm the good servant. I have the great revelation. I have the great preaching. You're a little different. Well, I'm going to beat you with my tongue. 
I'm going to speak ill of you. I'm going to tear you down. He says, he begins to strike his fellow servants. The master is going to come and he's going to say, basically, why are you beating the servants? These are my servants, not your servants. Why are you beating them with your tongue? Let us not be caught using our tongue to tear down the rest of the body of Christ. That's what I'm getting out of this. Let us not be taught, caught, let us not be taught or caught using our tongue to, to abuse their works, to speak ill of them, even if we don't understand it, even if we don't have the same revelation or understanding of what word. You know, we're not just going to sit around and, and let any doctrine go and flow and, and people teach whatever kind of crazy things that might happen. But watch what you say. I need to watch what I say, even what I think about my brothers and sisters. If I think they're in error, it is a good chance for me to go to the Lord and say, Lord, your servant, I have come, I have been appointed to feed your servants, not to beat them, to feed them with my words, not to beat them with my words, not to tear them down, not to tear down any move that God is doing that I might not understand or might not, might not be a part of, but to, to build up my brothers and sisters, to feed them with what I have, and to say, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done in your body, and may this body grow up, be nourished and knit together by what every joint supplies, and fulfill this work you've called it to in the earth. Amen. Be blessed.